Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit more about Venus and you can see Earth in the background right there because we're actually going to be talking about various um, features on Venus that are kind of similar to Earth but specifically I really wanted to focus on carbon this time. So we're going to discuss the amount of carbon on Venus and compare it to the amount of carbon on our beautiful planet Earth and maybe then talk about the possibility of one day terraforming this beautiful yellowish green planet and calling it our new home. Welcome to What The Math. And so what I wanted to really do is basically talk about Venus as the potential home for humanity, maybe sometime in the future, well actually a long time in the future, specifically here we're talking about millions and billions of years. But you never know, it might actually happen. And here's why. If you um, know anything about habitable zones, so-called um, Goldilocks zones, this is essentially where you can actually have liquid water, um, Venus happens to be sort of in it. It's a little bit on the outskirts, but it's actually um, right on the outskirts of the so-called habitable zone, meaning that technically Venus should actually have liquid water too. Uh, we know Mars has water, but it's actually frozen, and we know Earth obviously has water, but actually so did Venus sometime um, in the past. And as a matter of fact, uh, scientists today are almost absolutely certain that Venus did have quite a lot of water. And so sometime in the past, uh, Venus was actually very likely covered in the ocean and there was uh, possibly even uh, quite a lot of uh, liquid on the surface. And it may even actually look something like this, um, or possibly with even more water, because um, the one of the main differences between uh, the surface of Venus and the surface of Earth is that Venus' surface is very, very flat. There's actually very, very few mountain mountainous regions here. So it was actually possibly just kind of like this, liquidy, covered um, in liquid ocean. That was uh, not particularly deep, but it was there. And then something happened, and all of this water evaporated, disappeared, and now Venus looks more like this. It basically is a very thick, uh, very, very hot planet with a lot of um, sulfur dioxide, with a lot of um, various dangerous um, chemicals on it. So basically here you would die relatively quickly if you were to land on the surface of this unusually strange and inhospitable planet. But the face of the Venus today is very, very different. So basically, uh, we have this very thick um, atmosphere covered in almost entirely in carbon dioxide. As a matter of fact, the total mass of carbon dioxide in this particular atmosphere is thousands of times higher than uh, the carbon dioxide in, in the atmosphere of Earth. And, and here we're actually talking about the atmospheric um, mass that's even higher than the entire atmosphere of Earth. So if I were to actually change this into like a, a bowl of um, basically a mass uh, or an, like an asteroid, which is what I did in one of the previous videos when we actually talked about various masses of carbon on Earth, and you can check out this video right here. Um, so basically, yeah, if I were to change this ball into, um, let's just say, like a, a massive asteroid orbiting around our planet, it would look like this. Uh, so this is essentially how much carbon there is on Venus. Um, and this is basically all of its atmosphere as well, because we think that most of the carbon on Venus has become atmospheric and has actually escaped through the process known as the runaway greenhouse effect. Now, this is a term you may have heard before because greenhouse effect is something that we're concerned about on our planet Earth as well. And basically, if this happens to our planet Earth, um, the if basically, if um, all of the carbon that is hidden inside the lithosphere of our planet Earth, basically in the ground, comes out and enters the atmosphere, our planet Earth is going to become super, super hot, just like Venus. Maybe not as hot, but very close to Venus hot as well. Uh, but the total amount of carbon on our planet Earth is actually a little bit lower than the carbon on Venus. Um, if I were to create the carbon bowl f um, based on the planet Earth, it would look like this. It would be a bowl slightly smaller than the Venus bowl. Basically here, uh, the radius is 332 kilometers, whereas here it's uh, almost double, 615 kilometers. Uh, but nevertheless, so the total mass of carbon on Earth is um, quite quite a lot less, quite a lot less dramatic. But uh, the thing about Venus carbon is that back in the day, specifically uh, millions of years ago, it had even more carbon. As a matter of fact, um, it was very likely to be at least 10 times more carbon than there is today. So this bowl was um, very likely have been at least uh, this big. It was basically um, up to about 700 something kilometers in radius and it's steaming now because it's so close to the sun. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, it was actually quite a lot more carbon and the atmospheric pressure on Venus was very likely um, have been even about 10 times higher than it is now. So Venus may have actually have been even hotter. But um, it wasn't always like this. As a matter of fact, Venus actually became like this um, in the last few million years. In the beginning, when both Earth and uh, Venus were just born, they were very, 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 very similar to each other. They were basically almost identical and they were located in what's known as the habitable zone. So they were both, um, you know, they, they both had a chance to acquire water and other elements that we have on Earth today. And they did. Both Venus and Earth had very similar composition. So both of them had a little bit of water, or I guess quite a lot of water on the surface. Um, and then something happened. Something started to differentiate them. And this something was actually uh, very, very unusual. It's something that only Earth seems to have in compared to other planets in our solar system. And that something was, of course, life. Life started on Earth and it actually changed quite a lot of things. One thing that um, Earth started to acquire that Venus didn't acquire was um, life that started to produce oxygen. Now, unfortunately, we can't really put um, oxygen here. We can only put hydrogen, but we're just going to simulate a little bit of atmospheres just so you can see that we now have atmospheric pressure on both of these planets. As Earth acquired oxygen from all of those bacteria that started to produce oxygen, it also started to acquire something known as um, ozone, because as soon as ultraviolet light hits uh, oxygen, it sort of kind of um, interacts with it, and through various chemical reactions, ozone is born and is then um, used to basically protect the planet from more uh, ultraviolet light, ultraviolet radiation that can actually strip the planet from um, any kind of liquid or even frozen water. And this actually does happen quite a lot in our, in our solar system where um, the ultraviolet rays from our sun actually destroy quite a lot of water and turn it into something completely different. And this actually happened to Venus. So eventually Venus lost all of its water. It was basically all evaporated and disappeared completely. It became completely or almost completely dry, like 99.9% .9 dry. It still has a little bit of water left, but very, very, very tiny amounts. Even compared to Mars, it's even more drier than Mars. Then uh, something else started happening, and that something else was um, the release of carbon into the atmosphere. So carbon started to accumulate in a Venusian atmosphere, and it started to uh, become thicker and thicker and thicker. Um, this was mostly because of two reasons. What prevents this from happening on Earth is something called um, plate tectonics. It's when basically uh, plates on the surface of Earth start moving around and they do that because of the pressure of liquid water on the surface. If suddenly all of our oceans disappeared, basically if all of this liquid water disappeared, the plate tectonics would actually stop on Earth as well. And a very similar uh, thing would happen to our planet Earth. It would start getting hotter and hotter because a lot of the heat would start getting trapped inside. A lot of the carbon would start escaping from um, from the rock that's hidden, that's currently hiding a lot of uh, carbon in it. And um, this would cause a very dramatic runaway carbon effect that would eventually turn this beautiful planet that used to be a beautiful planet called Venus into a planet with a huge, 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 thick um, atmospheric pressure, very, very thick carbon-based um, atmosphere or carbon dioxide-based atmosphere. And basically, it would eventually become what we know as Venus today. It would become a very hot, very thick planet. And basically, eventually, it would become what we know as Venus today. It would become a planet that would have a very sort of thick um, atmospheric layer filled with very hot gases and it would basically be the hottest planet in our solar system but all of this really happened in the beginning because of one simple reason or most likely because of one simple reason because venus did not have life on it it did not have something producing this oxygen that would protect water that would then um, cause the plate tectonic and the motion of uh, various plate tectonics on the surface of venus and uh, that would eventually cool down the, the planet and also would eventually um, continue the carbon cycle in, in um, Venusian um, atmosphere. But unfortunately, this didn't happen. And so Venus uh, released all of its carbon into the atmosphere and became super, super, super hot. But the story doesn't actually end here. And the reason why it doesn't end is because, well, Venus also doesn't seem to have um, a magnetic field. As a matter of fact, if we go under materials here and look underneath here, you'll notice that there is no magnetic field. It does have um, a field that can be sort of interpreted as magnetic because um, when the solar radiation hits the surface of the atmosphere, and interacts with the ionosphere, it does create a kind of a magnetic field that protects some of the Venusian atmosphere, but it doesn't protect everything. If you go under materials, you'll notice that uh, Venus loses 
up to like 200 kilograms of um, atmospheric mass per second. As a matter of fact, if you wait for a few million years, the atmosphere of Venus will decrease quite dramatically. And at some point in the future, possibly about 100 million years from now, when uh, human race hopefully becomes interstellar and, you know, sort of starts living on other planets and other stars, we will actually be able to possibly settle on this uh, beautiful planet even without doing much terraforming because at some point uh, the atmospheric pressure here will actually decrease to being very close to the atmospheric pressure on Earth and this will of course also decrease the temperature quite dramatically and it will become a lot uh, less hot, a lot uh, less miserable obviously and a lot of the other materials here will settle and uh, this might actually become very very earth-like in the future again but once again it will not really have water so if uh, we become a species that can actually manipulate various things um, things in our solar system we might be able to actually send a few asteroids here that will then deliver all of this water um, from outer space from outer solar system and will hopefully create lots of lots of different liquid oceans and liquid water on the surface of new venus as we can i guess refer to it or we may call it um and so terraforming venus in the future is actually a possibility it's actually going to be much easier than terraforming mars because well first of all it's going to be already warmer than mars second it's actually a lot more earth-like it's only about 80 percent mass of earth and third uh, is that it will have a thick atmosphere already. We don't actually have to create atmosphere. Uh, but obviously this will be in the future unless we somehow accelerate the loss of carbon from the atmosphere of Venus. And that's actually a possibility. If we one day develop some sort of a super bacteria that can go into the atmosphere of Venus and start binding all of the carbon into uh, basically into ground and combine it with Earth on, um, or I guess, v Venusian uh, ground. I'm calling it Earth, but it's not really Earth. It's Venus. So I guess it's called Venus. Uh, but anyway, so if it combines all of this atmospheric um, carbon dioxide with uh, the rocks of on Venus, it, we might actually be able to create a very um, Earth-like sort of surface here. And um, as long as we can develop these sort of super bacteria or super animals or, or whatever the creature might be to uh, bind the atmospheric carbon dioxide with the ground and the surface um, rock um, in um, on Venus, on the Venetian surface. All of this is obviously right now science fiction, but we know for a fact that in the future, uh, Venus will actually lose a lot of its atmosphere and will become a lot more Earth-like as well. But it will take us a while to wait for it, because right now it is just too thick and too hot for us to even think about um, going there. But anyway, so that's what I wanted to talk about in this video, and in one of the future videos we'll actually discuss more about the possibility of terraforming Venus in uh, many other ways and many other unusual ways and uh, we'll even talk about uh, the possibility of creating a Venus-like condition on our planet Earth and that's of course a scenario where things just don't go well for us and uh, the carbon escapes from our planet and we all basically kind of sort of die. But anyway, that's going to be in the next video or one of the future videos, so don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. For now, I hope that you learned something from this video and if you did, share this with your friends or someone who you think may enjoy learning from video games. And don't forget, you can also support this channel on Patreon because it does kind of help me a little bit with purchasing new equipment, specifically new camera and uh, possibly a new microphone as well because mine is getting a little bit too old. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Game you later. And as always, bye-bye. And meanwhile, let's actually maybe smack a few more things, slightly larger things, into Venus and see what happens. Ready, steady, and go. Oh, it's getting yellow. Oh, it's getting very yellow. Oh, it's getting super, super hot. All right, I think I may have actually gone a little bit too far. This is not a home that I would want to live on. Sorry, Venus. You're kind of un uninhabitable now. Maybe next time.